In this um, video, I want to give you some examples of various types of liturgical music. Uh, the different parts of the Mass, I want to give you some examples of those. So the first we'll start off with is the very beginning of Mass, the entrance chant or song, or it's also known sometimes as the introit. This can take different shapes and forms. Most commonly, it's with an antiphon and a psalm. An antiphon is like a song with a short uh, refrain that repeats, and the verses would be the psalms. Uh, so it makes it easier for lengthening or shortening the duration of the procession, if it takes longer or shorter. So an antiphon, a little short refrain, and then the verses sung by the choir or cantor would be uh, from the psalms. Uh, or it could be a hymn. A hymn would be a song like Amazing Grace, uh, if you've heard that before. Uh, a hymn is a metrical uh, lyric or text with repeating musical uh, material. And I'll give you an example of that so you can hear it. The reason for the entrance chant or psalm has a number of different things. So the first one is to open the celebration. It also causes to unify the people of God who've gathered in that particular time, in that particular place. So the entrance chant or song, as we know, is a proper, and in this case, it's proper to a particular place or time uh, for a particular congregation it might make more sense. It also introduces the theme for the Mass or what we might hear in the Gospel. Usually the entrance chant or song will reflect some kind of um, element from the Gospel which will be read that day or from the particular feast that's being celebrated. And it also has an important part to accompany the priest and deacon and the other ministers from the entrance of the church into the sanctuary. And that procession that happens at this point is a symbolic action, a ritual action, which symbolizes the people of God coming before God's presence. So now I'd like to give you an example of a hymn. This is called Gather Us In. It's I believe from the late 1980s or mid 1980s, but still re very relevant. Uh, what you're going to hear is a concert version of that. And uh, so as a hymn, you'll hear uh, a repetition of the melody in the second verse, which I'll point out to you as we listen to it. As I mentioned, this is a concert version of it. Listen to the lyric closely. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space, our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty. Gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. As you can hear from the, the lyric of that song, it makes a whole lot of sense as an entrance chant. It opens the liturgy, it unifies the people, gather us in, the rich and the haughty, gather us in. Uh, here in this place, new light is streaming. It's very poetic, um, as it should be. Good art should be um, should lift us up. 
So that's an example of a hymn. The second example I'd like to give you is Gregorian chant, which we'll talk more about later. This particular one is an example taken from Midnight Mass on Christmas. And the text is in Latin, Puer Natus in Bethlehem, which translated into English is, uh, a boy is born in Bethlehem. And in this example, you will hear a short repeated refrain at the end of each verse, which is, In gaudis jubilo Christum natum adoremus cum novo cantico. Uh, so take a listen to that. And that's where that refrain, which I just said, In gaudis jubilo, in joyful celebration, Christum natum adoremus, Christ is born, let us adore him, cum novo cantico, with new songs. That would be the refrain that the people would sing. So you can hear the alternation in this antiphon with verses. You can hear the alteration between the choir or a cantor and what the people would sing. And that chant goes on and on. One of the good things about having a chant like that with an antiphon and then verses sung by the choir is it can be lengthened or shortened depending on the need for the procession usually on Christmas Eve at Midnight Mass, one of the most important liturgies of the year, you would want that to be longer because you might have more people in the procession. So that's an example of an entrance uh, hymn uh, or an introit. Let's move on to the Kyrie eleison. So this is a litany. So it's a litany is kind of like a list of things. Um, it's in Greek. It's one of the few Greek things which remain in uh, the liturgy from the ancient times. As, as you would imagine, in the ancient world, when Jesus uh, was around, when he walked the earth, the language of the world was actually Greek. It wasn't Latin. Uh, even though the Romans spoke Latin, most of the world spoke Greek at that time. But Jesus himself uh, spoke uh, Aramaic. He didn't speak Hebrew, as some people might say. Uh, that would be the language of the Jews, right? But that was more of a, a sacral language, a holy language. But Jesus himself, in day-to-day day -day living, he spoke Aramaic in his particular corner of the world in Palestine. But most of the world spoke Greek. And for the first number of centuries, the entire church, the liturgy, was in Greek. And then as Latin became more and more important, the liturgy was translated into Latin and because that was the language of the world and people spoke it. So this Greek element, one of the few things that remain in Greek. Kyrie eleison means Lord have mercy. Christe eleison, Christ have mercy. Kyrie eleison. It's in three parts. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. And it has a kind of a call and response where the deacon or cantor or choir would sing Kyrie eleison, the people respond, Kyrie eleison. Then the deacon or cantor or choir would say Christe eleison, the people respond. That's what we mean by call and response. Here's an example. Kyrie.
that's an example of the Kyrie eleison. The next element I'd like to talk about is the Gloria. Also, as the Kyrie is an ordinary of the Mass, the Gloria is as well. It's an ancient hymn of praise, as you uh, have read about. It is taken from the Christmas account of when Jesus was born, the initial opening line of it uh, in Latin, Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax hominibus bone voluntatis, is what the, the angels sang to announce the birth of Jesus to the shepherds. Glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those people of goodwill. This example is very simple, with alternating between can We'll get more into this a bit later with um, when we study Guri and Chen in our next class. Let me give you an example of a psalm. So the psalm is a proper part of the Mass. It's responsorial, which means that it is um, has a short refrain, like an antiphon, has a short refrain that is um, sung by the cantor or the psalmist and then by the people. And that short refrain comes back as the psalmist then sings verses of the psalm. So this is done after the first reading from the Hebrew scriptures uh, in the Liturgy of the Word, and then uh, is followed by the second reading. So it is taken, the, the responsorial psalm is taken from the 150 psalms as well as canticles within the liturgy. Here's an example of a responsory. This particular example is taken from the liturgy of the Easter Vigil, and this is known as the Contemus Domino, or Let Us Sing to the Lord. And here it is in Latin uh, that you'll hear. This follows the reading from the story of the Exodus. And this is also known as the Canticle of Miriam. But here's the translation. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. Let's listen to a short example of this. And then in the next class, we'll take a closer look at it. So follow along here. This is where it begins. And I'll try to read you. example, it's a little bit more elaborate um, chant. We'll take a closer look at that later, as I mentioned. The next thing we're going to look at is the Sanctus. Now, this is during the Eucharistic prayer, or the, the holiest time of the uh, Mass. The Sanctus comes to us from the Scriptures. 
Isaiah's vision, this is from the prophet Isaiah, and his vision of the heavenly throne, which is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 3. And in Hebrew, he translates the words that the angels sing as kadosh, 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 Adonai Tzavaot, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Melo kol haaretz kovodo. So I want you to hear it first from the synagogue service. Now the kadosh, kadosh, kadosh is sung before the opening of the ark which contains the scrolls of the scriptures in the synagogue service. It's important for us to, to remember that because the holy, holy, holy in the mass is sung right before the, um, the consecration when the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. So this is like the opening of the holy of holies. So here you have an example of that. The Sanctus ends the preface to the Eucharistic prayer and is sung right before, as I mentioned, the consecration. That is from the synagogue service, so I wanted to hear an example of that. Um, the next example is taken from Ernest Bloch. So this is like a symphonic version of it. Uh, but I want you to hear this um, in Hebrew because I think it's important for us to know where this comes from. So this is a more contemporary take on it. But what I want you to hear in this example is the way that Ernest Bloch uh, paints the scene of the angels hovering around God's throne, which is the vision of Isaiah. I know most of you don't speak Hebrew, but here comes the part with the Kadosh Kadosh. So just a little example of that, the Kadosh, 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 sung before the opening of the Ark in the synagogue service, which contains the scrolls, the Holy of Holies almost. And then uh, in the liturgy, the Sanctus, 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 sung before the consecration. So very similar action from the synagogue service to the Catholic Mass to draw those connections. This is an example of the Sanctus, very simply done with Gregorian chant. continues on as well. The next one that I'd like to um, talk about is the Agnus Dei. This translated is Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Uh, this has the image of the wedding feast of the Lamb, which is taken from the book of Revelation at the end of the New Testament. It is also tripartite, just like the Kyrie. 
Lamb of God, you takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Or in Latin, agnus dei quitolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. And then the third time, it ends with grant us peace, or dona nobis pacem. Let's listen to this. Day done very simply of the Gregorian chant. This is the final ordinary of the Mass. There are We know there are five ordinaries, the Kyrie, the Gloria, the Credo, the Sanctus, and the Agnus Dei. And the other elements that we listen to, which would be called the propers of the Mass, those things that change from day to day and week to week according to the liturgical calendar of the Church. So some examples of the musical elements of the Mass. <laughs> 